This image well represents Thomas Aquinas' idea of the relation between God and creation and how it is applied to the understanding of God's incarnation as a change that happens in createdness and not in God's nature. God's eternal being is the circular movement, interminabilis vitae tota simul possess. The eternal is immutable. What changes is the direction of the black arrow, above, below, inwards and outwards. Due to the movement of the black arrow, it appears that the circle that is eternally stable is also moving, but it is a relation of motion that is perceived by reason, Thomas Aquinas would say. The eternal, that is, God, does not move, it is mutable. What changes is the direction of the black arrow, and it seems that the circular motion of the eternal also moves in the four directions of the arrow. God does not incarnate, nor is he changed by the event of the resurrection. It is the human that changes in relation to the eternal God. This change seems to make it appear that God becomes incarnate. God suffers, God is angry, and then God forgives those who offend him. Just as it is an optical illusion that the circle moves in various directions in correspondence with the movement of the arrow, so it is a false image of God, an illusion of the mind, that the Word became flesh or that the Father has reconciled humanity. If we stop the GIF image, we will notice that the arrow is stable at rest. It is eternally stable as the divine circle. Creation is eternal. That is why it never had a beginning and it will never have an end. It is the mind that understands creation as having a beginning and an end, just as it understands God as if at some point he had created the world and at some point he will decide to put an end to the world. God decided to become incarnate at some point and uh, decided to return to uh, the Godhead at another point. But the mind lies in conceiving such a way, in such a way, the divine. Contemplation, instead, detaches the perception of the eternal from the mind. Contemplation is God's vision, perceiving the world secundum deum, according to God's vision, and not secundum hominem, according to the mind's vision.